Assalamu alaikum students and welcome back to these online sessions organized by our school SLS. I am Adhika Shakil and I will be teaching you social studies in grade 6. I hope that you all are good and staying safe at your home. I really hope that these online sessions are proving to be productive for all of us. We are studying chapter number 21, Islam first reaches the subcontinent. It's on book page number 94 till 99. Today we have to start its lesson 4. Today's topics are the Mongols. It's on book page number 97. The main personality that we will study under this topic is of Cengiz Khan. Number 2, Razia Sultana. It's on book page number 98. Number 3, Alauddin Khilji. It's on book page number 98. Alauddin Khilji was a famous emperor of Khilji's dynasty. Objectives of today's topic Number 1. To learn about the origin of the Mongols Number 2. To know the consequences of the invasions made by the Mongols Number 3. To study about the rule of Razia Sultana and Balban of Mamluk dynasty Number 4. To learn about Alauddin Khilji of Khilji dynasty Eliciting of previous lesson Dynasties studied in this lesson were Number 1. The Ghoris, ruled by Muhammad Ghori and his brother Ghazuddin Muhammad. Number 2. Delhi Sultanate. Its foundation was laid by Qutbuddin Abbas, the first ruler of the Sultanate of Delhi or Mamluk dynasty. El Tutmish. He was the third ruler of Mamluk dynasty, ruling the Delhi Sultanate. Here I have made true and false for all of you to elicit your learning of previous lesson. You have to also you have to correct the wrong statement too. Number one, the small state of Ghazni was ruled by two brothers. Number two, Muhammad Ghori invaded India and his brother invaded Central Asia. Number three, after the death of Muhammad Ghori, Il Tutmish became the Sultan. Number four, Qutbuddin Abak was the first Muslim ruler of all northern India. Number five. Kutub Menar is situated outside Bombay and is 80 meters high. Number 6. Abak died in 1212, followed by his son-in-law, Il Tutmish. Number 7. Mongols invaded India under the command of Cengiz Khan. I want you to answer all of them. In case you couldn't answer any of them, I want you to revise the topic. Moving to our today's topic, the Mongols, it's on book page number 97. First, we will know from where did Mongols come or what was their origin. Origin of the Mongols The Mongols were tribes who originally came from Mongolia but who traveled across the great plains of Central Asia with their animals. They were very fierce warriors and fought bitterly among themselves. Here, the word tribe means a group of people who are related together on basis of same society, ethnicity, religion or political basis. So people who belonged to Mongolia, they were sharing same traits or same characteristics. That's why they were called as Mongols. Now the next question is, where is Mongolia? If you remember, in our previous lesson, we studied that Mongolia is a place in Central Asia. <coughs> Here is a map of Central Asia displayed. This is Mongolia, China, Russia, Afghanistan and Iran. Here we have five republics of Central Asia. Number one, Kazakhstan. Number two, Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan, Tajikistan and Kyrgyzstan. So Mongolians, from here they travel Mongols traveled from Mongolia in the northwest to these great plains of Central Asia and they traveled with their animals. That shows that they were nomads. Invasions made by the Mongols Two prominent invasions were made by the Mongols under the command of their leader, Genghis Khan. He forced his tribe to unite together in one powerful force for the gain of more power and land. 
going to I'm going to read the first invasion made by the Mongols. In 1207, they attacked the settled countries all around them, seizing an empire from China Sea to Russia. As they were very fierce warriors, so first what they did, they began to attack the nearby areas around them, starting from China Sea to Russia. Do you know where is China Sea? China Sea is a marginal sea that is part of the Pacific Ocean and Pacific Ocean is one of the five largest oceans of the world. Now I'm going to read the second invasion made by the Mongols. In 1221, they invaded India, but after a battle against El Tutmish's army, they went back to Central Asia. We discussed this invasion while studying about El Tutmish. We studied that Chinggis Khan, he gathered his army to fight against El Tutmish as they wanted to conquer India. But in this battle, neither side won. So, Mongols, they went back to Central Asia. Change of religion. When Chinggis Khan died, later the Mongols became Muslim. They were called as Mughals, which is a Persian version of their name. For your information, I want to tell you that early religion of Mongols was Buddhism. They used to follow the teachings of Gautama Buddha and they were called as Buddhist. Chinggis Khan, he was a non-Muslim. After his death, Mongolian Empire broke into different groups and many years later, when different Muslim rulers came, they enforced Islam in this region. And this is how Mongols converted to Mughals and this was the start of the Mughals era. Moving to our next topic, Razia Sultana. It's on book page number 98. The name Razia Sultana might sound familiar to most of you because a drama was telecasted on one of the channels about the life history of Razia Sultana. Let's see a brief intro about her. Razia Sultana was the daughter of Shamsuddin il Tutmish. After his death, she became the ruler of the Delhi Sultanate in the northern part of the Indian subcontinent. She is notable for being the first female Muslim ruler of the Indian subcontinent. Who was Shamsuddin il Tutmish? We read in our previous lesson Shams that Shamsuddin il Tutmish, he was son-in-law of Eber and third ruler of Mamluk dynasty or slave dynasty. So during the lifetime of Il Tutmish, he observed that his sons, they were absorbed in pleasurable activities and they didn't seem to be well deserving and capable of managing state affairs. Whereas his daughter Razia, she was much capable than her brothers. So Il Tutmish, he nominated Razia to be the next ruler of Delhi Sultanate. Here is a map of Delhi Sultanate. This whole region was a part of Delhi Sultanate ruled by Razia Sultana after the death of his father Il Tutmish. Ruling period of Razia Sultana. Razia Sultana ruled the country from 1236 till 1240. The nobles of Delhi didn't like Razia as a ruler of Delhi and conspired against her and she got murdered. Nobles were the people who belonged to higher class and they enjoyed privileges that were given to people who were close to royal families. As a ruler, Razia had a strong personality. She made several important positive changes in the government. But the nobles, they didn't like to be governed by a woman. So they plotted against her and she got murdered. This is how the time period of Razia Sultana came to an end. Now, we will study about Balban. This is a picture of Balban. Introduction. Balban's full name was Razuddin Balban. He was the chief general of Nasiruddin, Il Tutmish's grandson. He controlled the empire for 20 years on behalf of his master, Nasiruddin. Balban also had to fight off the Mongol invasions. 
First, we should know who was Nasiruddin. As it's written there, Nasiruddin was El Tutmish's grandson. In 1246, Nobels they appointed Nasiruddin as a new emperor of this whole dynasty. But actually, Nasiruddin, he was under the influence of his general, Balban. So, indirectly, Balban was the one who was ruling the whole empire. And he also made a very strong impact of Nasiruddin as an emperor or a king over his public or whole dynasty. So, when Nasiruddin died, overall the control of empire was in the hands of Balban. During the time of Balban, Mongols they kept on invading India, they kept on trying to invade India. So, at that time too, Balban had to fight off the Mongol invasions. Ruling period of Balban When Nasiruddin died, the nobles made Balban the new emperor. He ascended the throne in 1266 and stayed as a sultan until his death in 1287. Here I want to share an interesting fact about Balban. Balban was also a slave and he was one of the 40 Turkic slaves of El Tutmish's group. So we can say that with the time period of Balban, the time of Mamluk's dynasty also came to an end because before him El Tutmish he was also a slave and the founder of this whole Mamluk dynasty, Qutbuddin, he was also a slave. When Balban died, after him, many new emperors came who ruled over this dynasty, but those emperors, they were weak. They couldn't keep a hold of this whole empire. So after them, a new dynasty started named as Khilji dynasty. And here we will study about Alauddin Khilji, who was one of the strong emperor of Khilji's dynasty. Introduction Alauddin Khilji was the second and the most powerful emperor of the Khilji dynasty that ruled the Delhi Sultanate in the Indian subcontinent. Alauddin Khilji as a ruler Alauddin Khilji proved to be a capable and good leader. He set up systems for good governance. As a soldier, he was even more successful in driving out the Mongols and conquering much of southern India. During his time period, Mongols again tried to invade India, but Alauddin and his army, they successfully fought Mongols and they had a victory over them. Moreover, he also conquered much part of southern India along with northern India. India that was already the part of Delhi Sultanate. Here is a map of Khilji dynasty. These areas might be familiar to you now because they all belonged to Delhi Sultanate. Home assignment. You have to find the answers of following questions. Number one. When and why did the Mongols attack the settled countries all around them? Number two, what was the new name of Mongols? Number three, in which year did the Mongols invade India and what was its result? Number four, who was Razia Sultana? Number five, why was Razia Sultana murdered? Number six, how did Balban become an emperor? Number seven, how was Alauddin Khilji as a ruler? Number eight, who was Nasiruddin? Here is a note for you. Take help from book page 97 and 98 for the answers of given questions and also mark them on the relevant pages. Here I have displayed book page number 97, the topic that we studied, the Mongols. Here is a picture that says the Mongols in battle. This info corner is from our previous lesson in which we studied about Qutub Minar. In this topic, I have highlighted some lines. I want you to highlight them in the same way because it's important for your objective preparation. It's book page number 98. This picture says Razia Sultana, 
the daughter of Il Tutmish. And here is a map of Delhi Sultanate. This map that we have already read. On this page too, there are some lines that are highlighted. I want you to highlight them in the same way, in the same way and prepare them for your objective. That was all about our today's topic. I hope it was clear to all of you. In case any query is still left, I want you to jot it down on a sticky note and keep it within that topic. So that when you will return to school, we will discuss it in detail. Till then, stay home, stay safe. Allah Hafiz.